much more convenient. And this is our stop. Oh, we've arrived, but I haven't even finished chatting with Abel yet. I also enjoyed Abel's introductions to Fontaine along the way. Everything you described was so clear. Thank you so much. I'm usually working here on this aqua bus, so I hope I'll have the chance to see you again. There are still many more places I'd like to introduce to you. <laughs> Welcome to the Court of Fontaine. <sighs> Chiori, you sure have changed a lot. This is the first time we've seen you since you left Inazuma. I haven't realized it's been so long. I was in such a rush when I left that I didn't even get to say goodbye. Thank you for extending the invitation, Mr. Xavier. I'm looking forward to a fruitful trip here in Fontaine. Ah, it's an honor to have the head of the Kamisato clan visit us. So they are who you meant when you said you had actors coming from Inazuma? Oh? It's the Traveler! And Paimon! Wow, what a coincidence! Ayaka and I were just talking about you on the way here! Are you also here for the film? We just ran into Xavier earlier and came over with him! <laughs> but I'm not an actress! Sir Kamisato and Lady... Uh, about that, I mean... How was I so I could... I had been thinking about... Oh, so you all... Why don't we go to... Huh? Yes, of course. Very well. Wow. The buildings in Fontaine are so tall. Just look at how big they are. And there's the fountain that Aval mentioned earlier. It really is a magnificent sight. And look at that huge spinning sphere. Where does it get its power? <gasps> Wait a sec. Could it be one of those clockwork mecha we've heard so much about? from Fontaine is like. Oh, it sure is different from what we have in Inazuma. How should I describe it? It seems like you have to go through a lot more uh, steps to make them. Ah, the uh, yes. When I first went to Inazuma, I actually thought the food there tasted a little too bland. Let's get back to the purpose of this trip for a moment, shall we? How have preparations for the film been coming along, Mr. Xavier? Well, I've already assembled most of the film crew. A lighting specialist, a prop manager, and a costume designer. I've also bought the copyrights from the novel's author. Oh, it's called The Two Musketeers, right? I read the script you sent me on the way here. The story is pretty good. Originally, I was planning to start filming as soon as Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka arrived in Fontaine, but uh, I'm afraid I've run into a bit of a problem. Oh? What is it? It has to do with the film's investor, Mr. Morris. He suddenly informed me this morning that he's encountered some financial trouble and will be unable to release to me the amount of funding agreed upon. It's said that Fontaine's legal system is well developed. If he has violated the contract, then can't you simply take him to court over the matter? Ah, well, I'm still more concerned about filming. Even if I were to take him to court, I'm afraid it would take months before the case could- Then, is there a way we could raise funds ourselves to solve the problem? I've considered that option too, but unfortunately it's difficult to gather such a large amount of mora on such short notice. Besides, we have to consider the film festival's submission deadline. Hmm. Mr. Xavier, if Ayaka and I were willing to perform for free, would that resolve the problem you are currently facing? What? Uh, no! Out of the qu- 
question. To have you come all this way just to act for free? Oh, no, 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 no. That There's no need to worry, Mr. Xavier. My brother and I had actually intended to work for free after receiving your invitation. Inazuma has only recently reopened its borders and needs to strengthen its relations and cultural ties with other nations. We didn't have many collaboration projects with Fontaine in the past, so we hoped this trip would serve as a good start for the future. Indeed. You could say that's the real reason why the Ashiro Commission agreed to come to Fontaine. I understand, but having you two act for free just doesn't seem right. Not at all. While we're officially here to conduct a cultural survey of sorts, we must express our sincerity if we want to establish formal cultural ties with your nation. This film will serve as proof of friendly cooperation and cultural exchange between Inazuma and Fontaine. It's my hope that the film can be finished and released as smoothly as possible. If you still don't feel comfortable with this arrangement, I would also be more than happy to be introduced to some other renowned individuals in Fontaine's literary and artistic circles. Uh, uh, all right, I'll do as you say. Thank you, thank you so much. I'll make sure to cobble together enough more and now, even if it means selling my house, my camera, and every single family heirloom. Come on now, no need to go that far. I'll also help you out as a brand sponsor. Me too! Even though I didn't bring much more to spend on this trip, it's still better than nothing. Uh, you are too kind, all of you. I... I really... Uh, ew. All right, enough about that. Now that we have Xavier's savings, my... So, instead of Mora... Oh, but how can we help with that? We don't... All right. Pull yourself... Uh, oh, uh, oh, I originally wanted to... Paimon knows what the direct... The clapper loader is responsible for using the clapper board to record and organize the information of each shot when the camera operator begins shooting. A clapper board? <gasps> oh, you mean the thing they hold that goes clap whenever they start filming? Yes, that's right. Are you interested? For sure, Paimon's always wanted to try that. All right, then you'll be our clapper loader. I can find someone from the store to help with logistics. What do you think, Xavier? Oh, fine by me. As for our camera operator, I was thinking of letting the traveler to- Oh, she's great when it comes to using a camera. Paimon can't even count how many things we've taken photos of during our journey. Yes, that's also what I was thinking. I noticed the traveler had an eye for photography and composition when we worked together previously. I'm sure that's due to the traveler's journey across Devat and all the places they've seen. After so many adventures, using a camera must be second nature by now. What do you say, Traveler? Are you interested in the job? Thank you, it really means a lot to me. Come on, friend, let me give you a big warm hug. So, all that's left for us to find is a direct- Oh, me, me, me! I want to be the director's assistant! All we need to do is help the director, right? I can handle- All right, then all we need is a director. Oh, all the well-known directors in Fontaine are probably also busy working on their own films these days. I'm not sure who will have time to help. Oh, Farina helped out a theater troupe recently by serving as an artistic consultant. She could be a good director, right? Besides, it's not like she has anything else to do right now. F F F Farina? Uh, do you really think Lady Farina would be willing to help us with our humble project? Isn't that the name of Fontaine's Hydro Archon? My brother has already informed me about what happened here in Fontaine. Yep, that's her! She helped out a theater troupe not too long ago, and now she's taking a work- Well, uh... Oh, I saw that musical. Her performance was perfect, and the storyboards were also excellent. Don't let her form or identity intimidate you. She is the best candidate we can think of right now. You'll never know until you give her a shot. Fine, you're right, Chiori. I'll do anything for the sake of my film, anything! Oh, then I'll have to ask the Traveler and Paimon to show me the way to Lady Farina's residence. I just hope she'll agree to help. Do you need us to also come along? No, there's no need to trouble you with this. Besides, you've just arrived in Fontaine, and I'm sure there are men- Just leave this task to me. It's part of my duty- Very well. Then- I'll go with you. 
By the way, you might want to consider bringing a gift. And don't worry, we won't simply drop you off at Farina's place. We know Farina pretty well by now. All right, then I'll start making preparation. Hmm. A gift for someone who was once seen as the Hydra Oricon. I wonder what she would like. I recall that Lady Farina once fancied a clockwork ring, so perhaps I should get another exquisite clockwork contraption for her. Huh? Can't we just bring some desserts, like the Fontanelia mousse? Hmm, but wouldn't that be a little too cheap? She does like- Isn't the Fontanelia festival happening right now? I heard Abel tell us on the Aquabus that Farina introduced the tradition of going door to door and asking for sweets. To do something like that, she must have- I agree with Yoimiya. If the gift is too fancy, it might actually make her feel more uncomfortable. Alright then, let's go buy some Fontanelia mousse! But will that really be enough? We'll hmm, you're right. We need to further- Huh? You want something even sweeter than- Yes, we'll need a gift that's- But well, what could that be? <laughs>
Okay, I'll go knock on the door. Please allow me to introduce myself. I am Xavier, a film director. Hello. Oh, is that the traveler in Paimon I see behind you? And who's this? I'm Chiori. Ah, oh, the one from Chioria Boutique. Hello, hello. So, what are you all doing here? Do you need something? Did you just get up for it? It's already past noon, you know. This is a, a small a gift, gift we've prepared for you, Lady Farina. We hope you like it. No need to be so formal. I'm just a regular person like everyone else now. Oh, is this Fontanelia news? <laughs> it's one of my favorites. That's great! <laughs> so, so actually, there's something we need your help with. with. Give it your renowned now, passion and understanding of the drama. I would I like to ask, ask that you serve as the director of our film crew. Uh, but, but did, did you just say that you're a director? Yes, but, but for this, this particular, particular project, project, I'm mainly, mainly working, working as a producer. Besides, I'm sure, I'm sure that your understanding of the performing arts far surpasses, surpasses my, my own, own Lady, Lady Farina. Are the Traveler and Paimon also part of the film crew? Yep, yep, we sure are! Paimon's the club promoter and she's the camera operator! Camera operator? That can be a pretty technical job and directly affects the final quality of the film. Are you really up to it? No, I'm not questioning your abilities. It's just that I've never really seen you use a camera before. Maybe you can come up with a test for the traveler and see for yourself! If she can satisfy you with your camera skills, then you don't have to worry about that and join the team! What do you say? Uh, you sure are getting a better at our role with the situation, Chima. Hmm. Oh, I do wish to see how skilled the traveler really is with a camera. Alright, how about this? We'll work with you. It's essential for the camera operator to understand the director's decision. I'll make my decision after seeing your work. work. Are you ready? ready? I have high standards, you know. Okay, okay. Grab, grab the camera and I'll, I'll give, give you some audio. Some audio.
really be honest. Do you really think you have what it takes to shoot a film? Put no thought into finding a good camera angle. And the characters were even in the shots. As for the original intent of the character's lines, did, did you leave them somewhere in the vicinity of Elton Trench? I mean, I, mean, I guess you could be trying, trying to pursue your definition of the avant garde. Ah! Does that mean you were to be our director for right now? <laughs> did, did you think I would agree just like that? After our performance of the little OC and Ed, I've begun to make a name for myself again, you know. In fact, I've, I've already had several troops approach me for the Fontanalia Film Festival. Unfortunately, the scripts were all pretty boring and didn't pique my interest. If others were to find out I agreed to work with you so easily, then, then well... Hey! Here we have a deal! What else do we need to do to convince you, Fanana? Uh... well... Huh? You know how much you're willing to pay me to be the director? Pay is also an important factor to me to consider, you know. Well, uh, I, I can offer you th this much? What? That's all? Nerf Nerf you let to hear this. He could charge you with underpaying your labor. I'm sorry, but our crew is in a tight financial spot at the moment. I see. Well, well, even though it's highly unlikely now that I'll join your crew, there's still something I'd like to ask. Exactly what film are you planning to make? Oh, uh, our script is an adaptation of The Two Musketeers. <laughs> Wait, you mean the suspense thriller novel that was a number one bestseller? Oh, so Farina's read it too. Of course I read it. I've always had a keen interest in artistic works that strike a chord with the populace. I see. It all makes sense now. You must have used most of the budget to pay for the copyright. Uh, not really. The novel's author transferred the copyright to me practically for free once he heard that I wanted to make a film adaptation of the story. The lack of budget is due to another issue. He probably just wants to get his name out there. So, Mora isn't the most important thing to him right now. It reminds me of a delivery courier who wears one of my designs while traveling all across Tavat. I, I didn't charge her much for the outfit either. The exposure she provides for my brand is well worth it. Uh... So, are you a big fan of this story, Farina? Well, uh... It's all right. The pacing of the story is good, but the character relationships could use some work. When I was reading it before, I always felt like some things were left on a rather unsatisfactory note. I have high standards, you know. Ahem, Mr. Xavier. If, hypothetically speaking, I agree to be the director, how much freedom would I have in terms of script revisions and creative interpretation? Oh! Oh, as much freedom as you would need! I wouldn't dare doubt the tastes of Fontaine's greatest star! Good! Then I'm free to alter the script as I see fit? Absolutely no problem! Seems that your crew really can't go on without my care and direction. So, you agree? I agree. Although the pay is well below what someone of my caliber deserves, a great script calls for a great director. I mustn't let a perfectly good story be ruined due to lack of funds. If you have fine cheese and bread, you wouldn't just let it sit on the counter and get moldy just because you lack an oven, right? Oh, Hydro Archon above! I'm not dreaming, am I? Somebody pinch me. There's no more Hydro Archon, you know. And it's still a little early to celebrate. There's a lot that goes into shooting a film. 
Although the trickiest tasks of finalizing the script and casting the actors have already been taken care of, we'll still need to reserve filming. And uh, by the way, since we'll be filming The Two Musketeers, we'll need to find an action choreographer. Ideally, a professional who has actual experience with muskets. Yes, I've thought about this as well. I was hoping that you might know someone who could handle the job. Me? Hmm. If this was before, I could have simply asked Lorand. But it's already been some time since I last talked to her. Navia can also use firearms, but unfortunately, her style is quite different from that of the characters in the story. Could we ask the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol? Oh, you mean the Special Patrol's Musketeers? Yes, that's right. They work with muskets every day. I can't think of anyone more qualified than them. They would be under Nervilette's jurisdiction. Unfortunately, I, uh, don't have any connection with them at all. Hmm. So, in the end, we still have to start by talking to Nervilette. No need to go to all that trouble. I know their Captain Chevras. Oh, you do? Wait, Chiari, how do you know the captain of the Special Patrol's Musketeers? No particular reason. Running a business means dealing with some trouble from time to time, and she's helped me out on a few occasions. In return, I've helped her handle a few situations in which the Special Patrol couldn't get involved directly. So, we've gotten to know each other over time. Uh, so you're saying there's been times when the Special Patrol needed a fashion designer to handle a situation? Your work is becoming more and more mysterious. It'd be best to keep it that way. Anyway, enough about that. What do you all think about asking the captain to be our musket action choreographer? She sounds professional enough. She is a captain after all. <laughs> I have no objections. But I imagine the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol must be busy with their duties. Do you think she'd really have time to help with shooting a film? And then there's the issue of pay. Well, it just so happens that she's also not the kind of person that's just after Mora. As for whether she has time, I'll have to go and ask her first. Then I'll leave that to you. Macaroni's on sale today, so I've got to go. You can just tell me how things went when we discuss tomorrow's plan later. No problem. <laughs> Having Farina join feels like a big boost to our team! Of course. Just wait until the day of our premiere. You'll witness the true power of my name in these lands. <laughs> You'll be so glad I agreed to help. I can guarantee that even the standing tickets will be sold out. I'll be sure to ask some people I know to see if they'd be willing to act as extras. <laughs> Seems like you're finally getting more comfortable with your own reputation now. I didn't ask for the Clapper Loader's commentary, Paimon. Then let's get going. I happen to know where Chevrolet is today. By the way, I'm curious. If my pay is so low, then what about our two lead actors? Didn't they travel here all the way from Inazuma? Actually, they told us that they see the trip as part of a cultural exchange, so they didn't ask for any pay. What? So is every person in Tavat who doesn't want money gathered here to shoot this film? Don't tell me Chiori isn't being paid either. <laughs> I already knew Xavier from before, and he's also agreed to give my brand some good exposure. It seems the gods have really smiled upon you, Xavier. And that certainly doesn't include me, mind you. All right, this is the place. Hmm. But where's the captain? There's hardly anyone around here. She's over there.
over there. The one with an eye patch reading in front of the newsstand. Oh, her! Paimon could tell there was something different about her. She seems kind of intimidating. Please wait here for a moment. I'll go fetch her. She's working now, so you might not want to get in her way. Working? But isn't she just standing there and reading a novel? Just trust me. Oh! Alright, let's see what happens then. Chiori sure is a mysterious person. She claims just to be a fashion designer, but she knows all these powerful people. The Court of Fontaine isn't particularly tolerant of visitors from overseas, so it isn't easy for a foreigner to promote their brand here. Even more so in the competitive world of fashion. Even a local like me just trying to make a film has to face all kinds of challenges. So I can only imagine what Chiori has been through to get where she is today. I'm sure that having more connections has definitely worked in her favor. Reading on the job? detective novel. One main character? No. Multiple. Branching storylines. I see. How's the plot coming along? One of the main characters is about to make a choice that will affect the rest of his life. I'd wager he's going to make the wrong choice. <sighs> anyway, to speed things up, there's something I need your help with. You know that doesn't depend on me. It all comes down to what the character chooses. Which is exactly why I'm here to help. <sighs> All right. It appears he made the wrong choice in the end. Halt! Huh? What's going on? Hand over whatever you're holding. Oh, it's just a book. I didn't buy anything else. Then I'm sure you wouldn't mind letting me have a look. Excuse me, officer. I don't mind you standing around here, not purchasing anything. But I'd prefer if you didn't disturb my customers. It's bad for business, you know? Don't give me that act. You won't be able to get off so easily either. I am Chevrus, Captain of Fontaine's Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I will say this one last time. Hand over whatever you're holding at once. And before you do anything unwise, let me remind you that I'll have you on the ground before you can even think about making a run for it. Uh, all right, all right! I'll give it to you. But please let me say something first. If there's any contraband in that book, then the shopkeeper here is the one who slipped it in. I don't have anything to do with this! Why, you trying to leave me on the hook, huh? You were the one who said you wanted it! Save it for the interrogation room. Take them away, Letelier. What's going on here? One second you're reading a book and the next you're escorting people away! And who are... Oh! Aren't you the traveler who's been all over the papers recently? Chiori, I'm assuming what you wanted to ask me about has to do with them, right? Ah, maybe I can let you in on what's happening then. Now that Vache has been brought to justice, no new shipments of synth will be made and distributed to sellers. The Fontaine guards have been busy collecting the remaining synths still circulating on the market. Thanks to a tip from our reliable source here, this should be the very last batch. Pretending to read a book in order to catch the bad guys! Oh! Paimon almost forgot to introduce ourselves. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler and Xavier! Hey, I'm Chevras. You probably already heard me introduce myself, so I won't bother repeating it. Yeah, why didn't you make a move as soon as you had the chance? <gasps> Were you worried that my intel wasn't accurate? No. I wanted to see if the shopkeeper would turn himself in first. All he had to do was come up to me and say that he didn't know where the synth had come from. If he did that, then I wouldn't have had to press charges on him. He had the whole day to turn the synth over to Chevrus. But instead, the moment I came up and blocked Chevrus's line of sight, he took the opportunity to sell it off. Yep, 
he made the wrong choice, even though the right choice was right there in front of him. But you knew they wouldn't make the right choice. Yeah, I knew. I was just hoping I'd be wrong for once. Eh. <laughs> Enough about that, though. What did you want to ask me about? Oh, you see, it's like this. The Two Musketeers. You certainly have a good eye for a story. So what do you need me to do? Just be the action choreographer for the actors? Yes, that's right. I want to make sure we get all the details right. I want the actor's posture and understanding of firearms to be as realistic as possible. However, I'm afraid this work will require a bit of your time, since you'll have to be present whenever we're filming. Also, as for the pay... No need to say any more. I'll join. Huh? Just like that! Really? You're willing to help us with our humble film project? Sure, it's no big deal. As I said, we've wrapped up our investigation here, so I don't have any other tasks on my plate for the moment. Besides, I personally really like this novel. I even have the collector's edition at home. Stories where justice prevails over evil never get old for me. Then we've got a deal? Yes, I'll see you on set tomorrow. Oh my! I can hardly believe it! I should tell Lady Farina immediately. Oh, and I must tell the prop manager and lighting technician to get everything ready! We start filming tomorrow! Calm down, Xavier. The film is going to take more than just a day to finish. Still, I should also head back now and start preparing the actors' costumes and makeup. Alright, guess that's it for today then! Traveler, Paimon, please stay for a moment. I have something to tell you. Then I'll take Xavier back. Poor thing. He's so excited that he can't even walk straight anymore. <sighs> I don't want to spend a fr- He'd better. What did you want to tell us, Chevres? Have you read The Two Musketeers? The story is about a pair of children born into the household of a baron and their struggle to survive together and take revenge for their mother. They were raised at the baron's estate where their mother worked as a maid. The two were illegitimate children that the baron had with the maid, so they were never treated well by anyone. One day, upon returning home, they found their mother had been murdered and left dead on the floor. It was quite evident that the culprits were the other members of the Baron's household, who never had any kind words to say to them. However, the Baron was able to exert his influence and keep the whole thing under wraps. The mother's death was eventually deemed as a suicide, and there was no chance of bringing her murderers to justice. The two siblings decided to flee and someday avenge their mother. Many years later, members of the Baron's family suddenly started turning up dead one after the other all killed by gunshot. A rainbow rose was found on each of the victim's bodies, being the flower that the kid's mother liked best. The Baron believed that the mother's soul had come to take vengeance on him, so he lived in fear each day. But it was actually those two siblings who had fled all those years ago. They relied on each other to survive and trained day and night, eventually becoming adept musketeers. They used all of their abilities to collect evidence and clues before executing their plan and exacting revenge on the Baron. Their actions let the truth behind their mother's death be known to all. That's quite an exhilarating story! Yep, the Baron got what he deserved for his evil deeds, and justice was able to prevail. It was just the kind of story I enjoy. Oh, so is that why you were so willing to join our crew, Chevras? You could say it was one of the reasons. Oh, you mean there were other reasons too? I've read the reports about you. Whether it was at the trials or when you lent your hand to resolve our nation's crisis, you've shown that you've got a strong sense of justice, as well as a great mind for deductions.
Yes, you're as sharp as I expected. It seems you've experienced many similar situations before. There's been a recent murder case involving muskets. The perpetrator's methods appear to be very similar to what is described in the novel. Huh? Really? But Pyrite didn't see anything about that in today's papers. The Marachose Phantom hasn't yet released any information to the public, because the investigation is currently at a standstill. The murderer is extremely cautious. A murder involving firearms? But not that many people use those in Fontaine, right? Impossible. We perform a routine inspection of our firearms and ammo reserves every day. If one of the weapons had been fired, it would stick out like a sore thumb. Besides, I trust the members of my platoon. However... Well, that's all I can disclose about the case today. Huh? What do you mean? I hope you all can go back and get some shut-eye. You can decide tomorrow whether or not you'd like to join the investigation with me. I'm aware this might not be the ideal time to add more to your plate, but... The more capable people we have, the better the chances that justice will per- Carrying out investigations isn't actually supposed to be our responsib- I don't want people to- You mean- I suspect so. Just to make myself clear, this is- If you two have any- Hmm... What do you think, Traveler? Yeah, you're right. You'd better head back and get some rest. It's good to keep a calm mind, especially when you're about to make an important decision. Otherwise... Xavier said yesterday afternoon went well. Yeah, and how about you, Ayaka? What were you After we split up, Ayato went to see Udex Nervilech at the Palais Marmonia. I was originally thinking of going with him, but he said he could manage it himself. He told me to go see the sights around Fontaine and to enjoy the local culture, so I rode the aqua bus at Yoimiya and visited the Opera House on Erinias Island. Yeah, you wouldn't believe what we saw there! Two mechanical puppets that were dancing together! You've already seen them, right? Yeah, yeah, those two! Amazing, aren't they? We sat and watched for quite a while. It was mesmerizing. Like we could- Oh, it was the same for us the first time we saw them, too! Afterwards, we went swimming at the beach! I held Ayaka's hand and we counted down together. Three, two, one, and then... Splash! We were beneath the waves! At first, I didn't dare to open my mouth. But once I couldn't hold my breath any longer, I decided to take a big breath in. <laughs> Turns out, the water wasn't as salty as I imagined. It didn't really taste like anything at all. Before I knew it, I was breathing like normal down there. It was an amazing feeling. Ayaka said I, I knew that the Traveler could do it, so I had no doubt we could do it too. That helped me feel at ease as soon as we dove. The underwater world in Fontaine truly is beautiful. I love seeing the Romaritime flowers blossoming underwater. Like little candles. Yeah! And there were so many creatures that we've never seen in Inazuma! Like those fish that shimmer like a sword blade. Whoosh! Oh, and those big fish that call when they see people. Oh, you mean hunters, rays, and blubber beasts! <laughs> I just love 
of the name Blubber Beast. Uh, just wait till the Pops and the others hear about this. They probably won't believe a word I say. <laughs> Yoi Mio was down there for quite a while. It was dark before we finally rode the Aqua bus back to the city. <laughs> yeah, even I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get up. <sighs> I still felt like I was drifting in the waves when I went to sleep last night. But as soon as I woke up today, I remembered that we'd all be shooting a film together and I was ready to go. Speaking of the film, where's everybody else? My brother and Xavier were speaking to the restaurant owner about using the place as a filming location. They should be here soon. As for the others, they were here. Please excuse my tardiness. I just finished the Special Patrol's six mile morning jog. Wait, six miles? <sighs> I'm so tired. I heard you all chatting, so I decided to come down. I sure could use some of that endless energy everyone else has. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Can someone fetch me a cup of coffee? More milk, more sugar. Sure, I'd be happy to do that for you. No, you can't go anywhere. Please, have some over here so I can get started on your makeup. The last thing I want is just coffee stains on my costumes. I can get the coffee! It's the perfect job for an assistant. Ugh, so much energy. Seriously, what's her Oh, you and you are always like that. Do you sure look exhausted, Farina? It's because you're not used to waking up so early, huh? Of course not. not. I spent the whole night writing the novel from cover to cover, marking sections that either need to be omitted or adapted. Wow, I didn't expect you to be so thorough. <laughs> Well, I was the biggest star in all of Fontaine, after all. It takes more than I went all out when I was at the of the Archon. So why wouldn't I do the same for my own life? Here's your coffee, Mary Jeffrina. Oh, thank you. <sighs> the sound of being called director. And I the aroma of feel you almost as as our shit. It seems everyone has managed to arrive on time. We've reached an agreement with the restaurant owner. We are free to use the second floor to shoot the film. Really? It's great! He is really looking forward to our film film and helps help provide his restaurant on a film location to attract more customers. Well, well, Mr. Zazie, I'll leave the rest of you here. Okay, thanks! First, I'd like to introduce our new members. This is our manager, Ronnie Peach. Ronnie Peach, she'll be joining us in a few minutes. Yes, this is our manager, Ronnie Peach. She'll be joining us in a few minutes. Yes, this is our manager, Ronnie Peach. She'll be joining us in a few minutes. Yes, this is our manager, Ronnie Peach. She'll be joining us in a few minutes. And this is his mother, our lighting technician. He'll be in charge of lighting and illumination to set up an unseen atmosphere. Wow! She'll be joining us in a few minutes. Yes, this is our manager, Ronnie Peach. First of all, all please, please allow, allow me to first express, express my sincere gratitude and my and my investors to form me as a day that we will be able to provide the funds. I had, I had no, no idea that I'd find so many, many people to help, to help me on such, such short, short notice. notice. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. No, no need to be so important to us, Azaiye. We are all honored to be a part of this. Your words were made foul and foul and fresh when I was on my magazine as well. I am sure some someday. This film will be remembered as a prime example of cultural exchange between Fontaine and Inazuma. Yes, yes. The story is the reason I agree to join. I can't have been there to even imagine what I Anyway, I'd like to make a promise to everyone that as the producer of this film, it must not be my film. It also is so. Without further ado, the two most mysterious will officially begin filming now! You may take, take it from here, Director Farina. Alright, let's listen up, everyone. 
one. has mentioned you to me before. She said that you two were great friends when you were kids. No, no talking. I'm thinking about how to do your eyeshadow. Ah, yes. To help me really look the part. To, to achieve a more young and naive look for this scene. Uh, are you saying the wrinkles around my eyes are too deep? You just have too much of a calculating look in your eyes. <laughs> you sure don't mince your words. It seems you really haven't changed much. Well, quiet. So, this is a real musket? No, it's just a prop weapon. Not bad. Have you seen a real musket before? Only in books and newspapers. I made this one based on the relative shape and proportions I saw in reference images. When we're filming, some special gunpowder will be applied around the muzzle, which will help create the flash and smoke effects of a real gun being fired. Which means it'll be up to the actors to portray the recoil. <laughs> That's right. The sound effects for gunshots will also be added in post-production. Thank you, Veronique. I think I know where to start now. However, the musket's gears and firing pin could still use some work. Adding some wear on the metallic components will make them appear more realistic. Also, be sure to rub the muskets with some oil each time before we start shooting. That'll give the impression that the firearms have been well maintenanced. Good point. You seem to know a lot, Miss Chevres. I assume you use- Yes, I perform root- I also perform similar care for my sword every day. And for- Yes. This way, our weapons will never betray us in the heat of battle. Yes, well said. It seems we have the same philosophy on this topic. Oh, sounds like they found a common interest to talk about. Though these props differ from the muskets I use, I can still give you some pointers. Good. I look forward to your instruction. First and foremost, never point the weapon at anyone, regardless of whether it's a real or prop weapon or whether you're holding it or it's on the table. This holds for any time when you're not actively engaging an enemy. 
Okay, and- When aiming the musket, extend your arm so that it's level with your shoulder, and use your eye to look- Like this? Not bad. Now, try saying your lines. <clears throat> this is the end of the road for you. Good. Now turn your body a little. That way, you'll- This is the end of the road for you. Huh. Excuse me, Miss Chiori. Director Farina, there's something I wish to discuss with you. Oh? What is it? Like this? Yes, much better. What do you think? Mm-hmm. I do see your point. But are you sure you wish to do this? I believe it would be most fitting. Well, if you insist. All right. <clears throat> Miss Ayaka! Miss Chevris, could the two of you please come over here? Huh? What's going on? Are we gonna start filming now? Let's go see. What is it? I have a question for you, Miss Chevris. Would you be willing to play the role of a musketeer? Uh, what? To clarify, I would like to turn over my role to Miss Chevris. But, brother... Don't worry, Ayaka. I actually view this as a good thing. I was becoming troubled trying to set aside some time to speak to the staff at the Palais Mermonia. I would like to have some conversations about the cultural exchange between our two countries, and I've heard that the bureaucratic process here can get... rather complicated. Now, I will be able to focus on my work. Besides, you also know that I'm not really one for public performances. Are you really sure? From a director's point of view, I also felt like the relationship between the two musketeers in the original story could be improved. The older brother in the story plays the lead role with his overbearing character, but this causes his character to overshadow that of his sister, and the theme of the two supporting it, but... If we were to change the siblings to two sisters of a similar age, then that aspect of the story also, I've- Of course. Even with all these- Uh... Shifra's mentioned that she really likes the story, right? Paima bets that she'll take the role. Alright, I'll take good. It's decided then. Uh, we'll also need to make some immediate adjustments to the light. <laughs> I have a feeling that our adaptation will be even better than the original story. You're doing a great favor for me, Miss Chevras. You have my gratitude. Don't mention it. I like this character, so if anything, I should be the one thanking you. Well, since my brother is the one who brought up the idea, I suppose there's no need to worry. Let's go, Miss Chevras. I look forward to working with you. Please, just call me Chevras. Seems like you're really going out of your way to solve the problem I was having with your makeup. Surely you jest, Chiori. I assure you that I was mostly motivated by a desire to spend more time on formal business. Oh, come on. You really think I'd buy that? According to what I've heard from Ayaka, her brother is someone who can juggle ten different matters at the same time. Perhaps. Ayaka always said she wanted to go out and see more of the world, just like the Traveler. But I feel that she needs not only to see other nations, but also to make some different kinds of friends. I think it would be harder for her to make new connections with me constantly by her side. Alright, go on. Spoil her some more. Ayato! It's too bad you're stepping down from the role. Paimon really wanted to see you act as a musketeer. <laughs> No need to poke fun at me. I'd wager that you also felt that I- <laughs> It's a little hard for Paimon to imagine you saying this- Yes. I've made an appointment to meet- Traveler, get the camera ready! Paimon, get the clapper board! Actors to your positions! We're- <laughs> Go on now. And please take good care of Ayaka. Yep, don't worry! Thank you. 
I look forward to seeing the film when it's finished. All right, now that we're all here, let me help set the scene. The first scene takes place when our two main characters, Chevris, will be playing the role of the older sister, Tulip, and Ayaka will be the younger sister, Iris. Be sure to get close-ups of the main characters at the right moment. Silence on the set! Lights! Camera! Action! Let's go! Tulip, Mother's been out for quite a while now. Perhaps she went to pick some flowers on the way home. You know how she loves flowers. Iris Tulip! I'm home! Mother! You were out for so long, we were beginning to worry about you. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm back now, safe and sound. Here, I brought your favorite treat. Apples... Mother, what are those bruises on your hand? Huh? What bruises? Oh, I must have bumped into something while I was working yesterday. But I didn't notice them this morning. Then perhaps they're from when I accidentally tripped when I was out just now. By the way, did you have fun playing at home? <sighs> What's the matter, Iris? Well, we've realized that no one really wants to play with us. They even took Iris's doll and spat at us. <sighs> and they even called us names. They said we were... Shh! It's alright, don't worry. Girls, listen to me. It doesn't matter what anyone says. Don't listen to them. No one can define you with such words. You both have wonderful lives ahead of you. Just like your names. You will both blossom like beautiful flowers. Maybe your time to blossom hasn't quite come yet. But one day, you two will bloom more beautifully than anything else. Don't let the soil you're in now ruin your future beauty, understand? <sighs> My dear daughters. And cut! Not bad. The actor's emotions were all on point. Let's keep that take. Also... If our clapper loader could avoid shouting at the start of the scene next time. Oh, uh, got it. <sighs> Great. I was a little worried that my nerves would get the better of me. What about you, Chevras? I felt fine. The lines weren't too difficult at all. Seems like Farina must have adapted the role nicely. <laughs> You two were great. I couldn't tell it was your first time acting in a film. You should have more confidence. Thank you for your encouragement. Positions, everyone! We'll move on to the next scene after we try a few more camera angles. This scene is when our two characters return home, only to discover their mother has been murdered. Mother, we're back! Mother? <gasps> What's wrong, Tulip? Iris, stay away! Huh? Why? What's... <gasps> Mother! Mother... She's... <gasps> There's poison in this cup. Huh? I could have sworn I've seen this kind of cup before. <sighs> Those aristocrats. They didn't even try to cover up their actions. <gasps> Ha <laughs> ha. 
Iris, we need to leave this place. Leave? But now that Mother is gone, where can we even go? Anywhere. All I know is that we can't stay in this house. <laughs> but... Are we just going to let them get away with this? We'll have our revenge, I promise you. Just... not right now. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. No. Wait. We can't just leave Mother here like this. At least... <laughs> at least let me leave this rose with her. That's why we went out in the first place. All right. Goodbye, Mother. We'll avenge you. Someday. And cut! Beautiful! Great performance! Oh my, you're so amazing, Ayaka! And were those real tears I saw? How did you do it? I was surprised, too. Thank you for the kind compliments. Actually, as soon as Director Farina said action, I told myself not to think about anything. I just felt the weight of the moment and became the character. It's quite similar to practicing the art of the sword. You clear your mind and focus only on what's happening in front of you. Ayaka's performance was amazing. Have I discovered an acting prodigy? Pipe down, everyone! We need to move on to the next scene! Traveler, is your arm sore from holding the camera all day? Good work, you two. You too, Chevres. You were quite the actress today. I've read this novel many times before. I have a good grasp of my character's mindset. Anyway, do you remember my request from yesterday? Oh, right! We were having so much fun that Paimon nearly forgot! You have a case where the murders seem really similar to the cases in the novel, right? So, uh... How are they similar, exactly? In the story, the main characters grow up to become two musketeers, always using their gun, and on each of the victims, they place a rainbow rose as a signal that they've returned. Yes, that's correct. We found rainbow... Oh, that does sound... Especially after seeing the script today! Uh, what do you think, Traveler? You're smart. Paimon wants to hear your thoughts. Good. On behalf of Fontaine's Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, thank you for your dedication to justice. There's no time to lose. We should start inve- Huh? Right now? The most valuable intel always comes after- That's how one of my favorite books always put- <laughs> 